Um, okay, you could just go to this uh, repo there, and you could just click on my binder, launch binder, and you'll be able to do the same kind of computations that I'm doing now. So. Is this fine? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it works with a Docker file. Like you, you put in a Docker file configuration for the binder. Like you go to mybinder.org and then you put a Docker file. And in the Docker file, we have the Julia kernel in. So. So that's the leak. Yeah, so that's the link there. So just click on the presentation and you'll be directed. Yeah. So uh, I'm Amit. Uh, I was a GSOC student last year working under NUM Focus. I worked on QDynamics.jl. Is this visible? Or yeah. So QDynamics.jl is basically a, a framework which provides uh, solvers for solving dynamical equations in quantum mechanics. Like we've integrated solvers from ODE.jl. Uh, expmv.jl, expokit.jl. Uh, basically, this expmv is a solver which actually takes the exponent of, of a matrix and multiplies it with a column vector. So uh, we wanted to do a benchmark on expmv and expokit. So as of now, we have the same solver from both packages. Uh, and then we have a Monte Carlo wave function method that is the MCWF, and we have written the Euler, Crank, Nicholson, and the Krylov solver methods. And this is for solving time-dependent and time-independent equations of uh, Schrodinger equation, Lewis von Neumann equation, and Lindbad master equation. So basically, uh, this is how the uh, these uh, equations define the state evolution. Like either you have uh, for every system you have the Hamiltonian, and then you have a initial state. And then we basically solve the Schrodinger equation. So that is the variance of the Schrodinger equation for different kinds of systems. So different kind of equations def uh, define different kinds of systems. So uh, the package uh, is based on qbase.jl. This is written by Jarrett. Uh, and it has all the machinery that is required for quantum mechanic computations. Like we have. Uh, all the operators, the state vectors coming from the qbase.jl package. And we have used pyplot to just plot few figures. So let's get started. I'm, I'm on localhost, but you could do the same on the other thing as well. So uh, we're using three packages. That is qbase, uh, taking all the machinery from the base, uh, qdynamics, which is the package that I've written, and pyplot for some plotting stuff. So the minimum parameters that we need, uh, need to define a system are the Hamiltonian of the system. It's just a toy model that I've put up here. This is the uh, sigma x, that is a poly matrix, poly matrix. And then there is a initial state, which is 1, 0. It is a column vector. And then my time steps of evolution are 0 to 2 pi, spaced at 0 point, uh, spaced at uh, point 0 0.01. So, uh, basically, we are going to get a state vector at every uh, 0.01 uh, instance between 0 and 2 pi. So that is basically what we are doing. It is basically a differential equation that is some kind of d psi by dt is equal to h psi. That is what we are looking at. So, <coughs> so we have converted this uh, data into a uh, suitable format for Q dynamics. The sigma x comes from Q base. Even the state vec comes from Q base. And then you have time steps, which is a float range. And there are a ra range of solvers that you can actually use. And that is QOD45, 7823S, Expocate, Tyler, Crank, Nicholson. Uh, these are the MCWF can also be used, but uh, it is a quite, it is different from the conventional setting that we have for these solvers. So, 
So we define the system using the Hamiltonian, the initial state psi, the time steps and the solver. So, so that summarizes the system. So basically it recognizes the Hamiltonian as a Schrodinger equation. So we have put everything into three equation types like Schrodinger equation, one uh, Lewerly von Neumann equation and Linbard master equation which are basically different systems. You don't need to specify the system because internally we have converted it into a system. We recognize it as a system. And then there is the size of the Hamiltonian and size of the initial state which is actually a show function which has been written for Q propagator. So basically what we have done for uh, this kind of a system is to get the states at different points, uh, at different time steps, uh, we've written a for loop which iterates over uh, instance which gives out the states at uh, different time steps. So just uh, writing these, uh, this for loop is going to evolve all the states. In sense you can play around with the evolved states psi and t at various time steps. So, so this is like I've taken the system which is defined this way and I've just uh, evolved all the states. So we are going to get all the evolved states getting plotted. In sense, the evolved state is actually a, a vector, but then we have taken the coefficients and have plotted it. So you can try some other solver. Uh, we have used uh, QOD 45 here, and you get the same results. So this is like, the evolved state, you just need to put in, define your system and define the for loop, that's it. It's going to do everything for you. So looking at a bit of the design, uh, there, are two, uh, there are mainly two constructs. One is the Q propagator and the Q propagator state constructs. Q propagator is going to take in the system information here. So we have an equation in its state T list and method. So this is the basic construct that we have to give in and the system is defined through this type construct and Q propagator state takes it, uh, stores in all the states. So once it is, uh, once the states are evolving, Q propagator state is the type that is going to be, uh, it, it is going to create uh, Q propagator states for each of the time steps. So we have used uh, the iterator from the uh, base. We have extended the iterators from the base for this kind of, for this kind of mechanism. So we've created base dot start, base dot next, and base dot done for the Q propagator type, which is the system type. And then, uh, if you look at the next uh, function, which we have extended from the base, there is a propagate which is between, uh, which is marked in red. Uh, so that propagate is actually going to dispatch it to different methods. So if you want to write a new method, all you need to define is a propagate function. That's it, it's going to do everything for you. Like define your function, propagate, and then uh, with a method, and then it is going to uh, use that method to evolve your states. <laughs> so this is the propagate function for the EXPM from QEXPMV package. So you just define you take uh, EXPMV from EXPM uh, V and then you look at uh, the operators that are being passed. So this is, you just need to define this function for your solver and it is going to uh, solve the system using your solver. And there is a wiki page where uh, you can look into for uh, adding a new solver. And it also, oh, just two minutes more. So. We also have a interface to Qtip like functions, like they have SE solve, ME solve, and MC solve functions. So we have a direct interface. In sense, we have the function names uh, from their space, but whatever is going on is uh, Q dynamics inside. So you could plot the graphs. I'm actually out of time. So to conclude, we have the Monte Carlo solver method. So this this is a bit. Uh, not uh, unconventional from the for loops that we have defined. In sense, we need to, this is like a, a probabilistic model, if I can say that, because you use a random vector and then you start 
use uh, you use a random vector and then you evolve using that random vector so so you need to basically have two for loops uh, one for loop for all the states and then you normalize uh, you average over all the uh, trajectories that you have used in the monte carlo function so and to conclude the parallelization of the above has in sense of the monte carlo method has just been looked into we have not really made it uh, like a feature in the package that is one of the things that we want to do and parallelizations can be achieved at different levels not only for the monte carlo methods but for qbase and q array from qbase which is basically the basic construct which stores the coefficients and the basis information and we have also recently added the time dependent hamiltonian cases uh, initially this was <coughs> everything you see here is basically time independent the hamiltonian is time independent but then recently we have added time uh, dependent hamiltonian cases and also the collapse operators which are time dependent are supported so you could check out the wiki articles and also the repos which are listed here and to talk about julia quantum we have we are working on a package called q uh, cmp which is quantum computation package where we are looking at quantum simulations different kind of quantum simulations so you could always check out the uh, binder and you could run the simulations in this like you could run the calculations in this if you want the binder link yeah this is the link on binder so yeah that's it Yeah. Uh, we have used it for the James uh, James Cummings model, uh, which is like a entire setup. Like you have the Hamiltonian, the collapse operators, and the number of states that are acting there. So this is like a proper problem that is. It is like an experimental setup in quantum optics situation, and also there are. few problems in uh, from q tip which are actually not producing the results in sense there are some uh, errors that they got using q tip but uh, i have results uh, maybe we could discuss it afterwards which is which are actually reflecting the uh, original case what what the answer was so like we are a step ahead but not in terms of computational efficiency there are still gaps in computational efficiency but we are getting the right answers what uh, some uh cases which are failing in q tip we are able to show it works in q dynamics yeah, yeah.